staying calm. It's our job as leaders to make sure everybody in the company stays calm and panic spreads like crazy and calm spreads like crazy. So control your mindset first. As businesses reopen, what will the new office work environment look like? And what health and safety measures will be here to stay? And how do you keep your team healthy, happy, and productive? Hi, my name is Andre Chandra, founder and CEO of Propella Media. Leaders rise up in challenging times, and in today's Ask an Expert series, we're sitting down with Ron Harrell, a veteran entrepreneur who founded My Office. It's a firm that provides office transition services, ranging from moving to structural, security, and technical setup. He is equally proud of his other company called Power Traction. He mentors other CEOs and also contributed his strong leadership talents to Entrepreneurs Organization San Diego, which he helped transform into one of the most dynamic EO chapters in the world. Listen to how Ron's team met daily and sometimes several times daily to balance long-term goals with short-term realities that constantly change because of the pandemic. And speaking of changes, his client's needs change dramatically, so he must pivot quickly too to meet this new demand and stay ahead of the puck. So Ron Harrell, uh, thank you for joining us today. How are you? I'm doing great, happy to be here. All right, yeah, nice to have you on. Um, why don't you, uh, for the audience, tell us a little bit more about yourself and, and your business? Sure. So, uh, as we were talking earlier, I've been a member of the San Diego Entrepreneurs Organization for 26 years. I have a company called My Office, uh, and My Office goes in and helps companies create great workspace. And if you think of all the business infrastructure you need after your tenant improvements are done, you have to deal with your managed IT services or IT, uh, server rooms, structured cabling, office furniture, office design, sound masking, audio, video, uh, and now a whole series of COVID products and services to make the workplace different than it's been in the past. Uh, I also own a company called Power Traction, and I'm a professional EOS implementer. EOS is the Entrepreneur Operating System that was created by Gina Wickman in the book, based on the book Traction. Mm -hmm. All right. So... Let's let's talk about your um, your second business first here. Uh, so you're working a lot with CEOs uh, to think long term. You know, think think beyond this predicament, this tunnel that we're in right now. Um, can you share a little bit more about this? You know, what are the the practical ways our audience could get into this mindset of thinking long term? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's been interesting. So typical EOS, there's six things. There's vision, people, data, uh, issues, process, and traction. And those are the six core components about EOS. It starts with vision. And vision is all about getting everybody in the company 100% on the same page of where you're going and how you're going to get there very specifically. What, is your, what are your core values, your core focus, your 10 year, 10, five to 35 year target, you know, BHAG is another word for that marketing strategy or your three-year vivid vision or painted picture one-year plan and then quarterly rocks so that encompasses the way to put your vision traction organizer we call it but it starts with that vision uh that target of where you're going to go imagine you had your whole team you're walking up to the jungle with machetes and you're going to kind of path through the amazon to a certain point you have to have a target and every 90 days, I want somebody to run up that tree and make sure that you're on target and you're going to where you think you're going to get. Uh, and then we have that three-year vivid vision that's a way to share what's in your head so that people can feel it, they can smell it, sense it, taste it, so that when you're walking into this building three years from now or, we, or your business three years from now, what does it look like? What does it feel like? What do you have? What's the energy about it? So we want to get that out of the... the leadership team's head and onto a, a, a document. And then we set a one year plan to know what we need to do this year to get to the three year picture that's going to get us to our five, 10 year target. And then break that down into a 90 day. All right. If that's the one year plan, what do we need to do in the next 90 days sure. to get the one year plan done? So that's the vision process. It's been interesting since this crisis hit. 
they went from a 90 day planning cycle in some cases when it first started down to a one day a two day planning cycle that's all you could see we didn't know what was going on and then this became a couple weeks and now it's become a couple months so i've shifted to now doing uh, kind of 60 day plans for the folks Right, right. So and actually, you read my mind. That's going to be my next question. I think um, this is on a lot of people's minds as well. What if people are worried about being off? Because especially these days with uh, a lot of uncertainty, you know, forget about seeing ahead 90 days or, or 60 yeah. days. People are scared and worried about what's going to happen, you know, next week or next month. Yeah. So, yeah. Can so you every business is different. So I'm seeing three things out there right now. We've got folks that are killing it. They are absolutely thriving. I got one customer who's in the Amazon space and they're, they're going international. They cannot keep up. Right. So they got a long-term vision and they're, they're, they're impacted in a different way. It's just as hard because they have to be more flexible and limp, uh, nimble and gets things done quickly. People are doing okay. And people who are getting crushed. Uh, so it kind of depends on where you're falling that and each one of those windows, you can only see out so far. So it's, it's, you need to really be realistic about that. That's why I said 60 instead of 90 days right now, because I just don't know what's happening much longer than that. When we're down to, when we were down into this, for my office, into this one and two week planning cycle, we switched from doing a planning session to doing daily, what we call IDSing, where you have a list of issues, you prioritize them in the order that you need to solve them, identify what the core issue is, have a conversation about, solve it, and move to the next one. And we were doing that every day for an hour and a half while we were trying to pivot through this thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. So sometimes it's daily. And, and for, you know, for some companies, sometimes hourly. You have to figure out what you need to do. And we're trying to keep everybody in line and keep those circles connected. Make sure that everybody in the company knows where we're going, how we're going to get there. And that's moving and shifting and changing. There's a lot of tension and in, in, in energy, uh, negative energy out there right now. So it's really helpful to keep everybody connected and let them know on that pace that they need to know as well. Got it. Got it. Now, there's a famous saying about staying with things that you can control. You know, I feel that these days, <laughs> these things that, you know, you can control is smaller than ever before. You know, if, if you're like me, we, we want to control everything we can right so what would you say are the top things people can control these days what should they focus on uh, first of all I like to use a saying that how we choose to react to, to the issue while we're going through the issue is the issue right so mm -hmm. we can control our mindset is, is one of the things so getting really clear on staying calm it's our job as leaders to make sure everybody in the company stays calm and panic spreads like crazy and calm spreads like crazy. So control your mindset first. And then you just have to make the best assumptions that you can. You got to get it organized into a logistical approach of this is what I think we should do first and second and third uh, and do the best you can and be meeting on a regular basis so that if what you thought you could control now no longer is the case that you can immediately adapt and be flexible and change and shift gears because that's going to happen. So I don't know if we really even have control. I like to call it a perception of control. We think, <laughs> we, think we have control of it. Things happen and we get to react to it. So got keep it. That in mind. Got it. So your other business, uh, my office is also very interesting, especially these days. So can, can you share what this new normal is going to look like in um, office environments? Yeah. Yeah, it's been interesting. It's, uh, I talked to numerous people that have somewhere between, I would say, five to, to even 150 employees, where they're saying they're going to close their office down. They're 100% virtual. virtual. Hmm. I don't know that that's really going to happen. I know a few people who are already in the process of doing that. So we've got people who are now the virtual experiment has, has opened up people's eyes. We can be productive working from home. That work though is what I would call focus time. So what I think that we're going to see in the offices and the way offices are designed moving forward 
are cultural centers, cultural and branding centers and, and meeting spaces. So we're gonna, we are gonna go there to get the connection, to do the teamwork, the collaboration, to make sure we have the culture uh, staying uh, strong within the organization. And, and that takes more space to spread out because of the social distancing rules. rules. So I think we're gonna need as much space as we have. It's just gonna be set up in a much more collaborative environment. So you've got meeting space, gathering space, and collaboration space instead of focus mm -hmm. space. And I think people are gonna get used to being able to be working from home most of the time or some of the time and, and being very productive on that focus time when we have to get stuff done. Not everybody likes working from home. Some people hate it. They don't have a situation. They want to get out of the house. They need to get out of the house. Uh, so companies are going to have to accommodate that. It's going to be, you know, adapting to the style and the people that you have working for you and seeing what they're comfortable with and then getting the office set up so that it is safe. Uh, and that includes a lot of new products that are coming on the market. So it's, there's been a trend in the past of putting more people in less space through these desking systems. You know, you go in, it's open office, and they got people right next to each other. That's going to change, and we're already selling right. what, what we call panel extenders. So it takes a, you know, four, 15 inch screen, and we can make it 30 or 40 inches high. And we're raising low panels. Uh, workstations are going to high panels. And we're breaking up this stuff and spreading it out. We've got signage that we're putting on the floor for social distancing. There's all kinds of products coming out to help companies work on that what you saw i don't know if you've seen on the news that just the uh the wristband you get within six feet of somebody you the the watch vibrates oh really it's it track it's tracking who you are getting within six feet of so you got all this data coming on and you know, that i'm a little suspect of where that's going to go because there's they're following you through the office and they know every point you know everywhere you've been uh, sure so there's it's interesting what's going to be coming out in helping companies to control that but Big companies are going to have to spread people out, rotate shifts, have hoteling stations, people coming in and out, decide at what pace do we need to do de decontamination services. Is that every day, every night? Is it every weekend? Is it, you know, every few hours they're coming through and doing cleanup and decontamination? So there's a lot to think about in terms right. of opening the office back up. Do you also help, or maybe you've heard a lot of things about the, the kind of the best practices not just the setup of the office, the layout, but rather um, what people should do in office environment. So, uh, for example, what I've been hearing is uh, maybe companies should start setting up a, a chief social distancing uh, officer or some, some kind of proctor or an observer who help oversee and, you know, um, and kind of maintain the rules uh, of social distancing. Yeah, yeah, I would think that would be an extension of whoever's in charge of workplace health and safety, right? So it's uh, that could be a new position in a smaller company is going to be picked up by the HR department that's that's already covering that in a larger company. So they, it definitely needs to be put on somebody's task to make sure we have the supplies, the signage, the consultative uh, experts coming in and tell us what we really need to do, managing the, the, the workflow, um, and and the training and accountability around the rules that are now going to be set within the company. Right. Right. Yeah. Now, um, in terms of you know post-COVID comeback strategies uh, in your industry or maybe overall, uh, what signals are you looking for, and what do you think uh, CEOs and companies should do first once they see the signal? Yeah, I. I would say you kind of need to be starting now before you see the signal. So mm -hmm. what can you do? This is an amazing opportunity to change your business if you needed to change it. So if you need to close a business unit down, but you've been putting it off, you need to downsize the company. Uh, if you have staff that you don't need, you, you should let go. It's not the time to do that as well as, hey, I've always wanted to go this way and, and pivot the business. Uh, some of the decisions are, do we need space or not, quite frankly. So can I shut down my office and save the overhead from that? So preparing now to keep things as simple as you can, to lower the cost of doing business as much as you can, to hang in on as much cash that you can. And the whole goal here is to be flexible and nimble. 
and get your leadership team on the same page so that everybody is aligned so that as you move through this and make decisions and start having to pivot that you have a way to communicate that to the entire team so that there's not chaos going on. Uh, so for us, one good example for my office, the way people that we were just talking about interact with the facilities is, is going to change dramatically. We have a whole new business unit that we're putting together around the safety in the workplace and the products and service that you need to, right. to handle COVID-19 uh, service. So we're making a pretty big pivot to launch a whole nother series of products and services that we didn't have before. So looking for those opportunities, there are things that are changing and how can you get ahead of that curve and start, start being a, uh, a resource for your customers that need that stuff. And I also would share that you really just need to get this stuff started. If you wait to try to have the perfect plan, it's too late. So uh, I was just on a, a webinar a little bit earlier this morning and Mark Cuban was, or not Mark Cuban, somebody was talking and they were talking about Jim Collins and the flywheel. And the flywheel is just, just get some momentum, get things moving in the right direction. Don't try and make it perfect. You just got gotta, you need to take action and start moving now. Right. Don't be afraid to make um, mistakes. Just experiment with small tests early and often yes. and then learn from those. Yes, got it. absolutely. All right. Well, Ron, uh, is there anything in particular that I, uh, I should ask you to share that I, I haven't asked? Um, that's a good question. I, <laughs> I, nothing is popping into my head right now. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of some of the stuff that I'm seeing with my customer base uh, in terms of what they're dealing with. You know, I, I, you know, probably around the culture of the business and how to maintain the culture of the business through this re new remote workforce that we have, uh, even when we come back. So I think it's really important to really to pay attention to what your staff needs and, and really work hard to keep them comfortable and let people know what the plan is. And if anything, be transparent and over communicate what you're going to do and what, are, what is their part in helping you get that done. There's a lot of negative energy and fear and stress and anxiety out in the, the world today. Uh, as leaders, the more we can help our staff be comfortable that we are on top of where we're going and how we're going to get there, uh, the better that the team's going to do overall. Got it. All right. Well, Ron, thank you uh, so much for this, this wisdom and, and you've given us uh, your, your time. Uh, I just want to wish you the, the best of luck. Uh, I think you, you. you got everything handled and uh, you know, your, your team and your business uh, uh, employees are in, in good hands, I believe. So you've been, you've been great. Great. Thank you. Appreciate that. Enjoy the time. All right. Thank you so much.